this is World Awakenings, the fast track to enlightenment with your host, Carl Gruber. World Awakenings is a podcast dedicated to opening your mind, your heart, and your eyes to the fact that the world's population is now, more than ever, awakening to all things metaphysical and spiritual, and just how they play an all-important role in our daily life. So join Carl on this enlightening experience as he interviews metaphysical and spiritual experts to discuss, debate, and delve deeply into the hows and whys of this worldwide awakening. Shall we begin? The stress and drama of daily life can many times be hard to deal with on your own. And that's why Excelling My Life gives you the freedom to choose a professional life coach without having to make any special commitments and giving you control of how long you want to spend with your life coach. Go right now to www.excellingmylife.com and find a coach that suits you best. Then click on call or chat now. You'll be automatically connected to your own life coach privately and instantly via chat or call. Find your very own life coach now. No waiting. That's www.excellingmylife.com. It's the quick, easy, and affordable way to connect now to your own life coach. Let excellingmylife.com help ease the stress and strain of daily life. Hi, I'm host Carl Gruber of this podcast, World Awakenings, the fast track to enlightenment. And after over three years of producing the show, I'm so happy and grateful to be able to welcome you. Thank you for either watching this broadcast on YouTube or for listening to it on iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, or any of the many outlets this show is heard on. It's our mission to continue to meet and talk one-on-one with the master teachers, authors, and icons of all things spiritual, enlightening, and metaphysical as we delve deeply into them and find out why now more than ever it is incredibly important to the health, well-being, and happiness of not only every individual but all of humanity. Now before we meet our guest, I sincerely ask that you please take a moment to click that subscribe button below so that you never miss a single episode of this show. So now for more than a decade, our featured guest, uh, Ginny Gain, has been working uh, intimately with manifestos and empowering women around the world to transform mediocre lives into experiences of true abundance, joy, and love through leveraging principles of the law of attraction. Boy, I can't wait to hear about that. Uh, Having studied intensely the power of the mind starting at age nine, and additionally through her degree in kinesiology, years of experience as a law of attraction coach, and now a best-selling author of the book, The Champion Mindset, and being the founder of of the LOA Skills Camp, Ginny has a unique perspective of what works in true vibrational transformation. Her core belief is that you can be, do, or have anything you desire. I I love it. Welcome, Ginny. Welcome. Thank you so much, Carl. I'm excited to be here. Wow. And I was I was checking into, you love to talk about how you bring out your inner champion, right? You know, that's great. Yeah, because when I saw the title of your book, yeah, I always say you you should, uh, you know, I've already said this theme of unleashing your inner champion. Yes, I love it. I'm like, oh, that's such a perfect alignment. (laughs) (laughs) Well, with everything you've got going on, this sounds awesome because you're certainly not bored. But I, I do have to ask you this. You started studying this stuff when you were only nine years old. How did you get uh, so interested at such a young age? Well, I have my parents to thank for that. It was a, uh, and I was put in a course that taught us all about visualization and just this idea that our thoughts have an influence over, you know, how we feel and what we experience in this world. So lots of kudos to them for setting me on this path nice nice and early. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's that's pretty cool because I mean you just don't see that commonly done, you know, looking at at uh, an aspect like the law of attraction. I'm sorry, my my uh, my roommate Maya the cat is down here jumping. <laughs> she wants to be well, on the show. It wasn't so much the law of attraction at that 
point. And I think that's really a powerful part of getting into this. Like I didn't, un I didn't learn about the law of attraction until years and years and years later, but having a strong spiritual foundation is what I would say, or a self growth foundation. And just, that is just a part of me. I'm sure it's a part of you and most of your listeners as well as this desire to just expand and, and be the best versions of ourselves. Yeah. Were you at that age too? Did you have your parents like studying maybe what you would call mindfulness? You know, I don't know if it was so much mindfulness as they were more interested in spiritual growth. You know, there was, there was lots of Wayne Dyer stuff happening oh, in our yeah. home. <laughs> yeah. And a course in miracles, like you mentioned, was a part of at some point along their journey. I remember seeing the book in the big book shelf. Yeah. Mm, wow. You got cool parents. I'm going to have to meet cool parents. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, I have to ask you, you know, sometimes when we get started as learning the law of attraction, you know, it takes a little while figuring out how to manifest things. So what are some of the, the first or biggest things you manifested into your life when you first started practicing the law of attraction? Yeah. Um, well, this is such a funny question because I totally love the law of attraction, but I don't really use it for things a lot. I use it to help create a life experience. So that was always what was most important for me is creating a life of freedom and work that I loved and obviously being surrounded by people that I love. So in the first part of that, I, I discovered the law of attraction when I was about 20 in my early 20s, 22, 23, 24, something around there. And I was traveling and I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life, you know, pick the career. Mm -hmm. And so after a few years of practicing this, I traveled around. So I always had, you know, a next opportunity fall into my lap. And, and you could probably say I manifest, I mean, I did manifest those things, but I never really, I wasn't trying to get something. I wasn't trying to get somewhere. And I think that's one of the reasons or experiences that allowed it to be so easy for me. You know, cause I wasn't attached. I didn't need it. I was just like following what was coming up and that next best thing. So it's funny because like when we start practicing LOA and we really get into this sense of like, I need this, you know, I, I need to manifest this so that I feel better. And for my own experience, it was much more of a rounded, like I, so I experienced, um, I would manifest jobs in different locations and then different lovers that I would connect with. And they didn't, those things didn't all last, but that time in my life was so transformative in terms of me developing my almost like confidence or knowing who I was really connecting to who I really am. Yeah. And, you know, I'm really glad that you said, you know, that um, the law of attraction isn't necessarily something that you use to get things because, you know, some, I would imagine there's some people look at it like ordering from Amazon, you, you know, I want this, I want this. Okay. Law of attraction delivered to me right to my doorstep. Yeah. And, and that's where, where a lot of people get lost or, or they, they, don't feel that it works. And, you know, that's why I really wanted to ask you is why, why is it that many people simply brush off the law of attraction as woo woo or something fake? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's funny cause it's completely grounded in science, even though we don't, mm -hmm. we don't need to justify, you know, we don't need to go there, but, um, I think we have so been conditioned, you know, to, un to, in the way that things work is very a hundred percent physical. Like everything is about that physical form, what we can see, hear, taste, touch, and smell. And everything is, that's what science is about, right? Only the stuff that's in front of us in that physical form. And so law of attraction, now we're talking about energy, you know? And so even though it's very real and we watch magnets go together, just applying it to that other concept, it's a, we have to be open enough in our paradigm to be interested in that. And I think sometimes we're just, we've been so conditioned along one way that we, it's just, it's just, that's not an option yet, you know, for a lot of people. Mm, yeah. And what do you think about that? As far as why people brush it off? Yeah. 
Well, and I think it kind of goes back to what I, what I said a little bit ago. You know, people come to it looking like they're going to order something from Amazon. And when it doesn't happen, they just, oh, this crap doesn't work. And, right. but, but you came from a real nice aspect of, of it and just manifesting the life that you want. I, I think I, I read on your website a little while ago that uh, you manifested a trip and went out to Mount Shasta in Northern California and camped there. And it was like a dream come true. You, you manifested that. Yeah, absolutely. I was on a trip around the States. We were driving around the States for three months in a van with our dog. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And uh, we stayed at where we planned to hike Mount Shasta. And and the way that works is, you know, you go up one evening and you get to spend the night on the mountain halfway up and then you climb the rest the next day. And for about five years or ever since I can remember, probably my first vision board, I had cut out a picture of, um, it was an orange tent on the side of a mountain and there was stars in the background. And that is what happened. Like I was looking at the pictures. I didn't realize this until I was looking at the pictures after, but I'm like, oh my gosh, there we are. It wasn't stars in the background. It was a sunset, but I'm like, wow, this happened, you know? Yeah. And that's interesting what, what you're saying right there, that that it wasn't until later on you realized that you had manifested exactly what you had on your vision board. And what that triggered is uh, in the movie, uh, The Secret, that came out in 2007, John Asroff, one of the uh, uh, um, icons of the law of attraction in, in our world, said the same thing, that he had cut out a picture of his dream home and 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 put on a vision board and it wasn't until he was actually living in in that dream home that he realized it was the one almost exactly like he had cut out so wow i love those realizations (laughs) it it is so um you know i do want to ask you this too and my my viewers and listeners know that i'm a certified uh, law of attraction life coach and and what you speak and teach is based uh, much on the teachings of a group of the Ascended Master teachers as channeled through a woman named Esther Hicks, and that group is, is Abraham. Why, why, why them? Oh, well, it just really, when I was in Australia traveling, and this is how I first learned about the law of attraction, is through one of their books, uh, the, the Astonishing Power of Your Emotions. And as soon as I read that book, it just clicked right? So we know truth by how it feels and how it's resonating within us. And so that was a truth for me. And it's just a feeling it's an alignment within yourself. And so it was very easy and natural to start applying that living that and sharing that with everyone around me, which also then evolved into a a career. Yeah. And I think many people, um, no, uh, you know, millions of people around the world know about Abraham, Abraham and yeah. Hicks, and um, they, they, uh, their book, Asking It Is Given, was actually one of our textbooks when I was in wow. my uh, certification for being coming a, a life coach. Uh, and I love um, Abraham's line that there is nothing you cannot be, do, or have. Yes, Classic. that is like that's much everything. That's yeah. much of your teaching. Absolutely. Everything. And one, another one of my favorites is uh, everything is possible 100% of the time. And just this idea of possibility. Mm-hmm. It's like, so, so uplifting and inspiring. I like you know, we're that. the creators. Yeah. I usually say that about mile 23 in a marathon. Anything. <laughs> I might even be able to finish this. <laughs> yeah, I bet you have a lot of application, right? Of those principles when you're running and doing those events. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, you know, again, uh, I, I love the stuff that you offer. I, I've looked at your website quite a bit. And, and I, I like your quote on your website uh, regarding your LOA skills camp. You, you have a quote, and, and I know you work a lot with women. You're about to get the confidence you need to finally live life on your terms and make the LOA a your biatch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because a lot of people feel so kind of out of control with, you know, they feel like they're getting tossed around by life. And I think 
one of the, you know, we're, we're never a victim to life. Life is who we are. We we're co-creators with life. And so when we start to understand the principles behind that, or that are with these universal concepts, then we start to feel more empowered. And then we get to start to make more choices. Now, I'm not a teacher of like that we control what happens outside of us and more that we co-create with life, but that when we manage our vibration and what's going on inside of us, we just get more and more of the things that are pleasing to us, which feels like we're controlling our (laughs) external environment. (laughs) Well, and I really appreciate that you pointed out. I mean, so many people have that victim mentality. I've talked about that many times on on many episodes of the show. And, And if you can, harness the power of, uh, and you should be, you can uh, harness the power of the law of attraction, then you're no longer that, that ship in, on, in, on the being tossed about by the waves without a rudder. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, and I'm sure you talk about too, how we're all, every human in the world is manifesting, you know, we're all <laughs> creating our own reality. It's just whether we know it or not. And then even so knowing it is the first step, becoming aware of it, and then knowing how to guide yourself or your thoughts or your energy so that you are getting more of you want, more of what you want. So there's so there's different parts of this kind of awakening p- process and it doesn't all happen at once. <laughs> it's all step. Yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful journey. And I, I have a feeling neither you or I will, will ever be lacking for clients because so many people need some, some direction and learning how to harness uh, their own dreams in their own life. Yeah. yeah. It's such a gift to be able to be in this place um, and, and create with others in that way. And I do really feel like it's a co-creation, you know, that we, we naturally attract the people in our life that are going to be for us in our life on our natural. I really think conscious evolution is very natural and we're, we'll draw in people that are, you know, the best people to help us get to that next place. And isn't that funny too, because some of those people we draw into our life, we butt heads with. Oh yeah. But they're actually, we pulled them in, in order to um, evolve and become a better person. We don't realize it at that time. You know, we don't like that. <laughs> yeah. But um, I love, I love working with clients on that one and, and, you know, talk a lot about, Hey, this person's driving me crazy. I'm like, great. And they're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they that, know what's coming now. That, that really is a hard one too. But, but, you know, I mean, in that case, it's usually hindsight, after that person is maybe passed out of your life, you look back, oh yeah, well, it got me in this direction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and tell us about your law of attraction skills camp. I would imagine you teach much of this. What's that all about? Yeah. So that's, uh, you know, I really, this came from total inspiration. It started out as an $11 PDF. <laughs> it's so funny. There's such like a path to this, but we you know when I'm, I was starting teaching this stuff, I'm like, what do I want to leave the world with? Like, what do I really want people to know? And it's, I want them to know they have the power to create the life they want. And I was like, okay, great. How do I help them know that? Not just teach them the stuff, the stuff is out there, but like walk them through an experience, help guide them through an experience where they feel the inner shifts happen in them, where they see it working in their life, they feel their power. And so that little PDF evolved into an eight week course, which I help guide women through in a group, this experience of like stepping into your power, starting to learn. There's the five law of attraction skills. I move, I help people move through, but when you learn them and then you apply them and you you start to see the differences in your life, you feel different, you see different, um, you see things differently. And that is just so exciting for me to, to help nurture this space for powerful women in this world, women being in their power. So that's what that's all about. 
Well, and you know that, and God bless you because so many women throughout the world and certain countries, especially there are really suppressed and disempowered. So mm -hmm. thank you for doing that. Do you work with uh, men clients at all? I, yeah, I work with men one-on-one. -on -one. So just not, I don't have a group format yet. It might be coming. So we'll see. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. let me know about that. So, <laughs> well, I, I, I'm curious too, from a personal aspect, you and I were talking about this before we started, uh, we came on here uh, about your spiritual mindset. I mean, tell me more about your spiritual growth and how does that play into manifesting the life that you want? Yeah. It's one of my favorite topics to topic to talk about about because i think sometimes there's been some contrast between or maybe not contrast but it, they seem sometimes like contrasting ideas and and two of so as well as abraham hicks one of my other favorite teachers is eckhart tolle so mm. he talks about the present you know present moment and being here now and that's where our power is and there's so many similarities between what abraham teaches and what eckhart teaches and so when I, I think embracing, not embracing, um, incorporating my spiritual understanding and how consciousness works and, and that evolution has really adds a depth to how I coach and teach about the law of attraction, because it, it's that connection. It's not just about the stuff. It's about who are we really like, what is our purpose here on, on, in life on this planet? And then how do our desires fit into that? Right. So in law of attraction world, we talk about everything is vibration. Everything is energy. There's that greater force, um, for force energy is a better word, right? There's that greater energy out there. And in spiritual world, we talk about there's an energy of consciousness and that's the source of everything. And that's what gives us life and that, that life force. And so consciousness wants to create through us. And so knowing this consciousness wants us to expand and evolve and leveraging the law of attraction, we get to be co-creators with that greater energy. And then, so it's what feels so fulfilling for us in life is just this expression of this energy through us. And that a part of that is manifesting stuff and manifesting form and experiences. And so it's all so connected, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And, and we're, and we're going to talk about your new book here in a moment, but, but what you said um, earlier that time, you know, my most spiritual uh, teachings throughout humanity teach that time actually doesn't exist. Yeah, uh, there is only now. I know, the, yeah. uh, of course, miracles calls it the holy instant. Eckhart Tolle, I mean, he calls it the power of now. And and once you understand that, I mean, it, your power is now, and yeah. you can grab onto it. It's nowhere else. It's not in the past. It's not in the future. It's it's right here, right now. Yeah. Um, and even uh, Abraham talks about that. You know, you're. Your, your power to create is now it's only ever now. So it's how you're feeling now, no matter what you're focused on. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. And well, and let's, let's segue over to that. I mean, tell us, I mean, you have this, uh, I, I read uh, some of your, uh, the beginning of your book, uh, the champion mindset. When did that come out and uh, tell us what the book is about? Yeah. So it's a, a basically, a, it's a really Again, when I was thinking about what I want to share with the world, it's my basics. It's like law of attraction basics. And so the feedback I've kind of gotten to that is for anyone who's brand new, it's a great introduction, maybe right after you've watched The Secret and you're like, what the heck is this? Mm -hmm. uh, for someone who understands positive thinking and like, okay, now what's the law of attraction? It gives them that very practical application. And for the the people that are more seasoned and what they, the feedback I got from them was just like, Hey, it was a really simple way. It was like to understand this, to like make it practical in my life versus some of sometimes some of the abstract um, context you'll hear about law of attraction. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. 
Well, you know, again, what I read uh, was pretty cool. And in, in, in your book, you have a section titled, uh, We're All Connected. Now, how is that? And why is it important to understand and successfully use the LOA? Yeah, so I mean, the, under- the, the scientific fact <laughs> that we're all energy, right? Everything that exists in this entire universe has a vibration, has a frequency. And so that is what actually allows us to be able to interact or communicate, to call things in, right? So we are our own expression of this energy. We're vibrating in in a certain place. We're radiating out this energy to the world. And it, even though it appears as space between us and another person, us in a couch, us in a car, whatever, it's actually just a different frequency of energy. And so because there is no space, it's just all connected, then we can, the energy can transfer from one thing to the other. This is how we call things in. This is how the law of attraction is applied because it's all just lining up all the energies within the universe, you know, of similar frequency. So it's like, it allows us to communicate. It allows us to communicate with our vibration to the universe, what we want. And then that energy, those vibrations are the pathways. If we weren't connected, it, we couldn't, we couldn't receive or, or give anything. And, and that is so in alignment with uh, two of my favorite authors. I'm sure you've heard of them. Greg Braden has a book yeah. called The Divine Matrix, which yes. shows the interconnectedness of everything. And Lynn McTaggart's book, The Field, also yeah. speaks of how everything is uh, connected. Um, exactly. Wait, can we go one more thing? So oh, like, yeah. this is my favorite thing. Like when, when we really, really understand that we're all connected And we're, and this happens in relationships so much, right? Like when we're seeing someone that appears to be outside of us, or we're we're observing a group of people and we're saying they're wrong, or they shouldn't do that, or that's awful. We are holding that hate or that anger or whatever it is inside us. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's in us. It ain't happening over there. It's happening in here. And so to be a part of the solution of creating more love in the world or peace in the world, it has to start within us. That's the only way. And it will, because we're connected, it translates out. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. I think I, I struck a chord with Jenny there and passion <laughs> for it. And I'm right there with you on it. I, I, just, yeah. I just absolutely love it. Um, it yeah. comes back to the, like one of the foundational things of law of attraction is you've got to take responsibility for who, how you're feeling, you know, somebody else is not, doesn't make you feel a certain way. It is all hundred percent up to us. We have the choice. It's, we have to learn, you know, we have to learn how to do that, but it is our responsibility, how we feel and how we respond and react to life, no matter what it is. And that's a champion mindset. <laughs> that's a champion mindset. <laughs> Well, you know, what I have read in in your book, I mean, it's very obvious your passion for a law of attraction. Heck, you even talk about quantum entanglement in there. That's right. Exactly. (laughs) What is that? that? (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Talking about all those. So that's the stuff we can't see, right? Like that is that quantum energy field is what we're talking about when everything is connected. Um, And, you know, you probably know more about this than I do. I just touch on it briefly in the book, but how that, that connection and how these thing these molecules that we can't see are, have a relationship with each other. Yeah. And, and, and really, I mean, it does go back to that, uh, uh, the matrix and connectivity of everything. Um, I, I can't remember. I've studied a lot about quantum physics, but it, sometimes it's, it's hard to remember everything that once, once, uh, like, well, let's see, I think electrons. I mean, if one electron is becomes uh, vibrationally or energetically entangled with an, another electron, they can actually be a universe apart and still uh, react to each other in the same instant. Uh, even yes. though so, and, and that applies to humans. Yeah. I love reminding people how 
I know it seems so kind of cliche sometimes of like, I'll send, send love, you know, oh, I'm going to send love, yeah. <clears throat> but you can have a thought about someone across the world and it's real. Like it yeah. carries its strength across the distance of the world when, and that's the demonstrating the connectedness. And, and ex exactly that, that, what you just used as an example, that, that comes back to many of us have experienced synchronicity, uh, even just sending out a thought, whether it was love or something else, all of a sudden, you know, this person that you hadn't seen in 10 years that you're just thinking about or sending love to, bam, hi, I, I'm going to call you up. <laughs> all the time. It's so amazing. I love that stuff. That's it. But yes, that's an example of that. Wow, I'm going to go get quantumly entangled here after I get off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and going back one more time to your book, you have this great quote that I read from an anonymous author. This is great. I'd like to put this on my wall. You are a ghost driving a meat coated skeleton made of stardust riding a rock floating through space. Fear nothing. <laughs> Yeah, right. It really puts it in perspective of sometimes we get so we have we get so serious about our life. And then when we step back and step back and step back and take this very, very general big perspective, then we realize, what am I scared of? <laughs> yeah, that yeah. Is, that's a great quote, too. But 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 yeah, um, um, I, here's another thing that I, I really do want to ask. Why, why are so many people, and I find this with many of my own clients that I work with, why are so many people literally afraid uh, to allow themselves to even think about achieving their biggest dreams, goals, and desires? Mm -hmm. Well, what I'm really moving into now is just this idea that most of the world is run by our our mind mind, right? Like our ego mind. Mm -hmm. And we're not really tuned in to our true self. We're not really tuned in to that, um, that soul part of us or that non-physical part of us. And, and the mind part has become very, very loud and so much so that we can't even hear the other part. So all we hear is the fear and we just, we think it's real because it's all we know. But as we walk this path and as we start to open up space within ourselves and and I really think that's all that it takes is an openness, you know, a curiosity is enough to allow this path to be able to connect with that non-physical part of you or your true self to be able to hear that more. And then as soon as you hear it, as soon as you kind of like catch a glimpse, then you can start to foster it and nourish it and nurture it. And as you do that, the fear dissolves. So I really think it's this uh, idea of you can't turn off the darkness. You can't turn off the fear. You just turn on the love. You turn on the connection, you turn on the light and the dark disappears. Right. And I, I have found too, that so many people, and, and I've even found it in myself too, growing up is a, a, a literal lack of worthiness lack of worthiness. And not much of it comes from what was pounded into us by the time we were seven years old. Okay. Oh, you know, nobody in our family is rich. Why, why should you be, you know, nobody in our family has ever gone to college, you know, why should you go? And, and there's a deep sense of uh, lack of worthiness in so many people. Yeah, totally. That's all our mental conditioning. Like, and because we are living from that mental space but and that mental space has been conditioned by the fear and those limitations like coming back again that's all we know and that's our safety place so there's not again there's not even other another option until we start to open and get curious about what other experiences are out there and what you know how does this world work how does how, why do so many different people have different experiences? Why is one thing true? Why is the world a safe place for one person and not for another? It's not only because of a physical location. It is, there's another aspect to all this. Why are some rich people happy and some extreme are suffering? It's not about the money. It's about something else. It's about an internal experience. And so you start to see these things and then question what you've been told. And then bam, you open up to a whole new, beautiful way that the world works. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of us say, you know, I'll be happy when 
I'll be happy when I have my million dollars. I'll be happy when I have that best-selling book. And then they get it and they're not happy or not as happy as they thought they were going to yeah, be. Yeah, temporarily happy. So when we have desires that are coming from our limited mental, our, our ego place, it's a temporary satisfaction. And we have, when we have desires that are coming from our soul, that's, that's our fulfilling place. Yeah. That's our soul place. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I um, was interested too. I see that you teach something called vibrational leadership. What is that? Yeah. That's all about being the example. So one of my favorite places in to apply this is in parenting because so many, I cannot count the amount of parents I've worked with that say, I want to be a good example for my kids. So I'm going to, you know, tell them they need to love themselves. They need to take care of themselves. Meanwhile, they're sacrificing their themselves or they're judging themselves or they're putting themselves down. And I was like, oh no, kids, kids don't hear what you say. They hear what you feel. And so being a vibrational leader in your family is about taking care of yourself, taking care of your vibration, being the example of loving yourself, being the example of following your dreams and believing in anything is possible. If that's what you want to teach your kids, then you have to do that. And, and every, we communicate through vibration more than we communicate through our actions or our words. And so vibration is the most important thing to pay attention to and to understand what's going on. I'm so glad you just said that, that we communicate uh, more through what we're vibrationally projecting, because I think uh, many people make this mistake, and I've, I've made the mistake myself, you know, uh, is that what the law of attraction, the universe is really responding to, you could say, I want, I want a brand new Corvette, I want a brand new Corvette, but projecting vibrationally from your heart, from your subconscious, it says, I'll never have that. I'll never have that. Yeah. That is what the universe really responds to and what the law of attraction returns to you. not Absolutely. having that new Corvette more and more and more. Yeah. And so that's like step number one is that developing that awareness of like, what is going, what am I communicating to the universe in this moment, in this moment, on this subject, on this subject, and if you, if you just ask yourself that and you start to pay attention to how you're feeling, start to pay attention to what's going on inside, then you can go from there. So I, I would think that a person really needs to sit down and, and look, what are my real subconscious beliefs, my paradigms? What do I need to change? Yeah, definitely. Like starting in a place of awareness is huge. I don't know about it's sometimes hard to try to figure out, like look back and figure out things about yourself or in your subconscious, but you can always know by how you feel about something. You know, if you think about money or you think about that new Corvette and you, you ask yourself how you feel about that inside, even starting as general as do I feel excited about it? Like, do I feel good or do I feel bad about it? Is there openness or is there tension? That's a great place to start because then if there's, if you notice tension and you're like, oh, okay, I'm communicating tension. I'm like actually resisting this Corvette versus if you feel excitement about it, then you're like, okay, now I'm in alignment with this. I'm, I'm allowing this to come into my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you, you know, I really like that term vibrational leadership. It, it really kind of adheres to what, what I believe, and, and this has been the biggest change in my life, what I, I call creating a rock solid personal foundation by marching uh, hand in hand w in, in the integrity with universal eternal truths and laws. Um, most people don't do that. And, and so, you know, I, I, write about this, the three pillars, you have your mental, physical, and spiritual pillars that hold up your house, your life, all based, if you can build it on a rock solid personal foundation, then your pillars aren't going to get cracks in them because you're walking in the integrity with the truths of oneness, connectivity, uh, and, and that, and, and if you can keep your pillars solid, then your house stands strong. And what I've found is, as I've done that, I'm more consistently able to manifest that, which I want. Absolutely. I a hundred percent agree. And 
I've realized that or reflected on that throughout my path is that one of the things that allows me to this to be pretty solid for me and, and, and uh, dare I say easy <laughs> mm-hmm. is that I have a very, very solid foundation in who I know myself to be. So mm-hmm. even just the understanding that I'm not just a physical human being, that there's another part of me and that the real, real part of me is eternal. I think that is something that has carried me and allowed me to expand in, in all of these areas is because I'm not scared of losing myself mm. in any of these like, external things. Cause I know even when I leave this life that something goes on, you know, as, as far, as far as my intellectual mind can understand that. Mm-hmm. Well, wow. this is beautiful uh, folks. We are talking to um, law of attraction teacher and author uh, Jenny Gain in her beautiful uh, new book, uh, the champion uh, uh, mindset. And it is awesome. But, you know, I want to ask you this and in, in, in our world everything almost everything going on in these days in our crazy world is disempowering and chaotic uh, how can people use the law of attraction to right now to empower their own lives to live a happier healthier existence well you know i think the first thing the, the thing that like pops up that it comes kind of screaming through is like don't watch the news don't watch the news <laughs> yes um And sometimes that's really alarming to people because there's the the desire to stay connected. Mm -hmm. And so I think even before we get to any action of don't watch the news, it's this idea of prioritize your well-being. So whatever it takes for you to just feel a sense of lightness about life do that, prioritize that. And that might be different for other, for every person. And so oftentimes that's going to be not watching the news or oftentimes that's going to be spending time with certain people or, or meditating or spending time with yourself or writing, whatever that is that nourishes your self is what is going to ground you and, and enable you to kind of handle what's everything happening in the world right now. Um, it really comes down to it. It takes time to trust that how you feel is enough that you can manage how you feel. And that will create a more pleasant experience for yourself. I know we can't just jump into that, but yeah, really prioritizing your well being is how, whatever that means for you mm-hmm. is going to really jump like kick you into that high gear of being feeling that place of empowerment. Yeah. Solid advice, solid advice on that. Um, You know, you have a podcast, right? Tell us about that. Yeah. It's called manifest it now. And I co-host it with a really good friend of mine, Cassie parks. And we've actually, we're going on our sixth year of podcasting. Yeah. So it's, we've done an episode every week. We have over 300 episodes all about manifesting all on every topic you can think about, which is really exciting. Um, and we're actually switching starting in the new year, we're going to be switching to season. So we're going to do a whole season, 13 episodes on one topic and just diving really deep into that kind of like a course we're going to give homework and, and practices and exercises. So Yeah. yeah. So we're excited about that. And what's it called again? It's called manifest it now. Is that on, on YouTube and iTunes and all that? Yeah, all the places, anywhere you listen to podcasts, you can find it. Wow, our, our podcasts will be side by side. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is just this is just absolutely great. And, you know, Jenny, I have to say that, um, you know, today was the first time I met you just before we started recording this. Um, what you have shown me is you have a rock solid passion for this, but it's well-rounded. You're based in spiritual truths and and, uh, you've made a a great, beautiful life for yourself. And evidently you're helping a lot, a lot of people to do the same. So thank you for doing that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me here and being able to, you know, share with everyone that's listening in. Well, how can people connect with you if they want you to coach them or take uh, one of your workshops? Uh, You have a website, you have a podcast. How can they uh, hook up with you? 
Yeah. So the easiest place is just Googling my name, Ginny Gain, G-I-N-N-Y-G-A-N-E. And that's my website. Um, you can find me on Instagram at the same same handle, Ginny Gain, and say hi, say, hey, I was listening to Carl's show and I heard you. And that'll be fun to connect there too. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you. Thank you, Jenny. It was just totally awesome. Um, I hope we get to chat again soon. And uh, as usual, namaste, my friend. Namaste. Thank you, Carl. This has been another episode of World Awakenings, the fast track to enlightenment with your host, Carl Gruber, a certified law of attraction life coach. We welcome you to tune in each and every episode of this podcast, World Awakenings, as we open your mind, your heart, and your eyes to the fact that all the world's population is now, more than ever, awakening to the truth of all things metaphysical and spiritual, and just how they play an all-important role in our moment-to-moment everyday life. Much love and light to you, my friend. Thank you for tuning in.